Hey everyone, today's tutorial is going to be a video on Hypercam 2, a free screen recorder, somewhat like Cam Studio. Now don't get me wrong here, I'd much rather prefer Cam Studio over Hypercam 2, since Cam Studio has a better recording quality, and I'm much, I really like their appearance better than Hypercam 2, it seems more advanced. Alright, so, this is actually part one of a two series tutorial. In the sec next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to activate uh, Hypercam 2 to get rid of that watermark that you see on the top left hand corner. Not right now, but if you do record with Hypercam 2. So first off, I'm just going to open up Hypercam 2. And I'm just going to delete all notes here. Sorry about that. And uh, in this video, I'm going to be showing you all my options I use to record with Hypercam 2, which I don't do often. So we're going to start off with the screen area. And um, the width I use is 500 and the height is 400. So that's basically the equivalent of 320 by 240 in Cam Studio. So it's fairly the same. You can even just select the region. So you just drag your mouse to select it or select the window. So let's say I just wanted to record Mozilla Firefox here. It would only record that itself. Nothing around the desktop here or any other window. Next is show the rectangle around the recorded area. I use this so I know where my viewers are looking. Uh, so I can get a better idea of where I should place my mouse. Uh, that's pretty much it for uh, what I have checked off. The only thing here is leave Hypercam window opened, so like you know I could start recording, pause, play, etc. Next is hotkeys. There's the stop and start, pause, resume, and the single frame shot, which is basically a screenshot. And for these, these are totally customizable. I have F2, F3, and F4. You just have to click on them to uh, to change them. Now pan the capture area when the mouse is moved and the following keys are pressed. So this is basically auto pan in Cam Studio. So I have to hold shift and F3 for the screen to follow my mouse for the recording, I'm sorry. And then I have to press it again for it to stop. So I like this feature so you can, you know, stop and start auto panning when you want. But I find it's a bit um, weird cuz you have to have something plus something, so shift plus F3 here. So next is AVI files. I already have a set folder here, which is in my D drive, mic, and I made a folder called vids. And it does, um, if you check this box off, it adds sequential numbers to the file name. So it goes 0023, 0024, 0025.avi. So it keeps on doing that each video you create. So I find that's pretty convenient. Um, obviously, if you're making a tutorial, you should record sound. And these are very important. These are sort of the um, recording attributes. So rate and frames per second, I record 5 and playback 5. And the cursor full frame capture ratio, 1. And keyframe every 100 frames. Uh, the video compressor, I just kept it at auto select. It was strongly recommended, so yeah, I just kept it at that. And my frame compression quality is at 75%. Sound, as I said before, if you're doing something with sound, you should obviously record it. The sample size, I use 16-bit, and the highest one here, 44,100 samples per second. Other options, uh, if you want, you could record your cursor. If you want, you don't have to. It all depends what you want. Well, I just said want in a few times per in that second there. Sorry about that. Anyways, add Starburst to the movie when the mouse is clicked. Basically, let's say I left click or right click somewhere, anywhere, it adds a small star, and you could change the pixel size of this, make it huge or small. Mine is at a fairly small size, and uh, when you left click, the star is red, and if you click on the color, you could it's fully customizable, you could change, change it, and if I right click, the star is blue. Uh, the mouse, mouse click sound volume, I always keep it at zero because I hate the sound of mouse clicks when I'm watching YouTube tutorials and stuff and it just drives me nuts so I always keep that at mute or zero. Screen notes is basically just annotations 
new note or edit a note. I won't do that right now. And the license. This is what I talked about earlier. I'll be doing this in a in the next video showing you how to activate Hypercam 2 throughout the license I'll be giving you. So I hope you enjoyed this small tutorial on Hypercam 2 and what options I use for it. Please rate, comment, and subscribe if you like our videos.